Hi everyone, it is August 30, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along some articles to me. These articles only reveal more obviously the mega regions, the reshaping of cities after disaster videos that I have posted saying just that over and over again. And, you know, I was listening to someone who was saying that we have all the information already. We have all the inf we've had the information for years and years and years that all of this was happening. It would only accelerate if we could not get it stopped. Unfortunately, a lot of people sit back and put their faith and trust in liars like Trump. Trump, oh, he's fighting the deep state and he's going to make America great again. Has he done anything to stop these Agenda 2030 plans to put us all in mega regions? No, nothing. Those waiting for Trump, those waiting for Jesus and God. Well, I guess, I guess when you put your faith in something external. It gives you permission to sit back and do nothing. The only people who can get this stopped are the American people. That's it. Bada boom. Bottom line. The American people need to act. Harris County judge addresses land affordability in wake of Harvey Houston. You're going resilient. After that flood, where did all of the monies go that were collected? Donations. Google, donate to Harvey flood victims. Red Cross, donate. All the actors and actresses in their telethons bringing in, bringing in so much money. Did it go to the victims? No. It's going to the reshaping of your city in accordance with the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan to reshape the world, but to reshape the United States into mega regions. And I have posted so many videos on this, so I'm not going to bring up the map. I've done it before. Land and housing preservation is key to the Houston region becoming more resilient. Harris County Judge Ed Emmett. I vaguely remember it was this judge who told all of those who lived in Harris County not to evacuate. Am I wrong on that? I might be. Don't quote me, but I vaguely remember it was that guy. So, he said that Tuesday on the heels of last week's vote that approved $2.5 billion flood infrastructure bond. Apparently, it was a vote of the people in Houston, and you voted yay on a $2.5 billion flood infrastructure bond. Well, those of us who know that these floods are being brought about deliberately, weather modification, the Army Corps of Engineers. I posted a video, the Army Corps of Engineers is being sued due to the Army Corps of Engineers knowing what would take place, knowing that the reservoirs that they released to create more floods and the release of the waters in the reservoirs, what is it, Attic and can't remember the other name of the reservoir, they knew that those reservoirs were too small. They did nothing, nothing at all. They knew that a rain, certainly 50 inches, would, uh, those reservoirs would not contain the water. All right, so they released those waters that flooded tens of thousands of more homes. All of this deliberate, and it's very maddening when you see all of these people voting for 2.5 billion flood infrastructure you better watch 
where that money goes. Because I think that a lot of those, a lot of that 2.5 billion is going to reshape your mega region, your Texas Triangle. This is what that judge said. We need to not fight nature. We need to live with nature and allow those areas to be green that need to be green and frankly allow those areas to be wet that need to be wet and not try and change that. Okay, well that goes along with the wildlife uh, project which is an organization that works with the United Nations to bring about Agenda 2030. So, what else does he say? It's really, th this article, there's a lot of very concerning uh, concerning statements made by this judge that just shows that, yeah, our local officials our state officials, our federal officials. Those that we vote for are are destroying the Constitution, destroying the United States, destroying your freedom, working for the United Nations, whether they know it or not. The useful idiots are those that actually know what they're doing and those who don't, but just go along with an awful lot without doing the research to find out what all of these agendas are really about. Homes in flooded neighborhoods are having to be rebuilt to higher storm standards. And I'm going to also show you the difficulty that California fire victims are having in rebuilding their homes. It is far more costly to rebuild than to build a new home on just a vacant lot. Especially when you have to now rebuild your home in accordance with all of these new codes that are very costly. So those who can't afford to rebuild are having to sell and find housing elsewhere. Where? There are an awful lot of Americans who cannot afford these disasters. This is what is really concerning. The challenge is brought by Harvey will give city and county leaders the opportunity to make positive changes as it recovers. That's what the judge said. One such improvement, a better system of urban governance. Wow. So they're going to be reshaping your government into governance. What is, what's the difference? Government. It will, you know, that's a narrowly defined, uh, well, it's supposed to be narrowly defined responsibilities given to government. But unfortunately, that definition has greatly expanded over the years. Governance to govern every aspect of our lives. If unincorporated Harris County was a city, it would be the fifth largest in the United States. The judge said this. We cannot continue to do that. We have got to find a way for City of Houston and Harris County to come up with a new structure of urban governance. I view Harvey as kickstarting a lot of these conversations. Urban governance. Well, all of this comes on the heels of City of Houston selected to join 100 res resilient cities 
the global network Rockefeller's 100 Resilient Cities. Oh boy, Houston, you are looking at rapid changes that are going to be taking place. The city of Houston will also now have access to the 100 Resilient Cities platform of partners, a group of 120 nonprofit, for profit, academic, and government institutions who have pledged more than 200 million in services at no direct cost to member cities. Oh, there's going to be a big cost to all of you, your cities, which means that it's it's money out of your pocket to do all of this reshaping. But all of that group, well, they're going to bring critical tools and services and technical assistance to Houston. Houston will now have access to the global peer-to-peer -peer network of 100 resilient cities providing the city with the opportunity to build and foster new cross-city partnerships, public-private, while importing and exporting solutions to address problems in Houston and elsewhere. Yes, it was the lessons from Houston. 100 resilient cities. And it's all about Agenda 2030. Paving over the sawgrass prairie. Reduce the ground's capacity to absorb rainfall. Move the people out of those areas. Rip up that pavement. Flood control reservoirs were too small. The fault of the Army Corps of Engineers. Building codes were inadequate. All of you, whether you are flooded out or not, will have to upgrade your homes at a cost that's going to be very difficult for a lot of people to um, incur. Roads became rivers, so while hospitals were open, it was almost impossible to reach them by car. And listen to this. Disasters don't have to be devastating. That from Eleanor Kitzman, who was Texas's state insurance commissioner from 2011 to 2013. She now runs a company called My Strong Home that helps homeowners upgrade their homes to qualify for lower homeowners insurance premiums. Either way, no matter how you look at this, it's going to cost you. So, resilient Dallas. Resilient Dallas. You already have a chief resilience officer. It's Teresa O'Donnell. Now, whether or not you are officially one of the 100 resilient cities chosen, you're still upgrading. You're still being reshaped, as all mega regions are. The mega regions, uh, Northeast mega region, Piedmont, Atlantic mega region, Texas Triangle, Arizona Sun Corridor. Oh, I can't remember all the names, but there's 11 of them. And that's where everybody will be living. Oh, because nature. Nature. We can't fight nature. Well, you know, we, we have fought nature for a long time, right? We've built homes. And, you know, I mean, it's been certainly the past, uh, I don't know, 70 years suburbs and all of this kind of stuff. We never had these problems. There is not overpopulation, by the way. If you look into that, you will see 
there are actually United Nations reports stating that there is a world infertility crisis. There is a male infertility crisis in the United States. People are having difficulty having babies. More people are dying because of all of the poisons that we are now subjected to. So our population, I do not believe it is the number that they report, which what is it, 324 million? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't even think it's 300 million. So all of it is just a lie. And so many people fall for it. They fall for it. And because they fall for it, and because they choose willful ignorance, then everybody has to live the consequences of the reshaping of the United States. So, um, here, rebuilding a struggle after California wine country fires. Dip into retirement savings to cover a 300,000 shortfall in one resident's homeowner's insurance coverage. I watched a video uh, just the other day of someone who I thought was a really good thinker, and then I heard or watched a video, and he was ridiculing truthers for posting the same old, same old videos, California fires, directed energy weapons, and connecting Agenda 2030 to all of these disasters. And he said that people are rebuilding their homes in the same areas. And essentially, he was debunking what a lot of us have been saying about Agenda 2030, these disasters, the connection, moving people into the mega region areas and using these disasters to do it. And he said, you know, people had insurance policies and they're rebuilding their homes in the same area. So I guess that means we are all wrong and he is right, but he is wrong. The same thing with the floods. Fire victims having great difficulty getting, and many are fighting their insurance companies because the insurance companies are not, are not compensating or not paying out the amount that a lot of people believed they would be getting. So there's an awful lot of people in Santa Rosa, the thousands upon thousands of homes that were destroyed by the fire. Many people are struggling because they don't have the money to rebuild. Insurance companies denying claims or not giving the full amount so that they can rebuild, rebuild these homes. And this, uh, this woman here, who, Sherry Sharp, rebuilding after her home was destroyed in the fire, she thought, or she and her husband thought, that they had the insurance policy that they would be covered. Well, they were not. So they had to take out 300000 from their retirement savings. Many people in Sharp's position, underinsured and having to scramble for money to build a new home on their property. Many people don't look at their insurance policies and they rely on what the insurance man is telling them, their insurance agent. They rely on what the agent tells them. That is not a good move. So many homeowners say they are locked 
in negotiations with insurance companies for additional money to cover the cost of building a home. Certainly in this area of California, the San Francisco Bay Area, the technology boom sent home prices skyrocketing. Uh, competition among neighbors for construction crews and materials had left many homeowners hundreds of thousands of dollars in the red. The insurance shortfall, uh, another guy, uh, that in shortfall was $200,000. We're not talking pennies. And this couple had used every insurance dollar they received to pay off the mortgage of a home that no longer existed because it was burned, and then they had nothing left for a down payment on construction. And they drained their bank account. They have a five-month-old boy. People say, just move. There's a, you know, it's, it's like, oh, God. If it's easy for you to just pick up and move, go ahead. It's not so easy for an awful lot of people, especially when they have roots in an area, family and friends, uh, the psychological um, upset is great. You know, moving is, it's divorce, moving, and death, I think. The three major stressors. It's not an easy thing to do. So, after paying off the mortgage and nothing left to pay on construction, after everything is built, we're looking at a monthly payment on that, the loan, that's going to be $1,000 more than what our mortgage was before. Everything far more costly. So you have the Santa Rosa fire that burned down thousands of homes. And last year you had major wildfires in Sonoma County, Napa County, thousands of homes also destroyed. You're looking at so many people who are very stressed right now so as of April of this year, nearly two-thirds of those fire victims wanted to rebuild, but most had yet to settle insurance claims for their property and belongings. This group, United Policyholders, a San Francisco-based nonprofit that helps people understand their insurance policies, why do we need, as adults, companies to help us understand insurance policies you know, they could be written very clearly and easily, but they are written in a way where most people can't understand them. That is deliberate. Deliberate. You know, the, the fine print, the small print, the, the clauses that, that literally just <laughs> can eradicate the clause before that you read something that you thought you would be compensated for another clause says well you're not going to be if this happens and yada 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 so they write them so they will benefit that's why it's really important for people to go over their insurance policies whatever it is whatever you're insured for with a really critical eye because so many people are being screwed now. Um, so two-thirds of respondents reported being underinsured by an average of three hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. Experts warn that many Californians whose Homes have been destroyed in this year's wildfires. Also, we'll discover their policies will not cover the cost of a new home, leading to similar rebuilding delays. Few homeowners update their policies annually 
to keep up with inflation, labor, material costs, and home upgrades that increase the value. The State Department of Insurance in California found that insurance companies often understate replacement costs to potential customers and omitted or misrepresented fees for permitting, architects, labor, and zoning. Well, you would think that those who misrepresented, omitted, you know, uh, uh, deceived cust uh, their customers would be prosecuted. Ah, forget about that. We don't do that anymore. False sense of, of, of security. It's common among the insured because most rely on insurance companies for details. That false sense of security is rampant. And people need to start thinking differently in this country because we sure do have an awful lot being destroyed they believing that they were secure. Tariffs hurt fire victims struggling to rebuild. The import tariffs imposed by Trump are adding thousands of dollars to the cost of building homes. That especially squeezes homeowners who seek to rebuild quickly after losing their homes to natural disasters. All of it deliberate to force people to just give up. And many do. And those that rebuild, look out for the next fire. Now, this is one of the why, uh, one of the reasons reconstruction usually costs more than new construction. Most older homes and many newer homes were built during times when building codes were less strict than they are today. The codes today are the United Nations international codes that all countries are using. Why are we using international codes? Why, why are we using United Nations international codes? That's a question that all Americans need to be asking, but they don't. Um, so, uh, you got to meet the newer and more demanding building codes. Even undamaged parts of the structure may have to be rewired or replumbed to meet current codes. Building codes may also require you to replace windows with safety glass, replace roofs with fire retardant materials. Building code changes can add thousands of dollars to the cost of restoring a damaged home and the cost of construction. You got the tariffs that made lumber more costly um, and everything you know is getting more expensive so the cost of building materials and contractor fees they rise sharply in response to the sudden demand you have thousands of homes that have been leveled and need rebuilding well they don't, it, it's supply and demand. So the cost goes up. If you have not seen these videos, and I'm sorry about my computer, okay, Rockefeller's Resilient Cities, and there, there are many, many videos on agenda. If imagine a pill that can improve your. Sorry. Um, on Agenda 2030, Agenda 21, Resilient cities on YouTube. I will link below to these two fires in Northern California. ICLE, which is the uh, local arm of the United Nations implementing Agenda 2030 around the world. Resilient cities take over New World. Okay. So if you don't know anything about the resilient cities, you might want to listen to those two uh, videos. But urban governance, urban governance, and this judge in Harris County is suggesting 
that you 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 bring in a new form of governance you guys in Harris County you guys in Houston and you guys especially in any of those mega regions America 2050 just put that in a search and you will see America 2050 mega regions you will see where they are where they're located um, your government is going to be reshaped your cities are going to be reshaped and it is all about a new world order a one world government handing your local governments over to the United Nations that's what it is so Houston Harris County we need a new structure of urban governance and what does it look like well actors and institutions of urban governance private local state civil society you're all going to be involved but it's kind of like that public private partnership and well they say that the ordinary resident can be involved you won't be you're not even involved now you go to your town council meetings you notice how your town council members don't listen to you you think our congressional representatives actually represent us there are so many people who still believe that despite how obvious it has become that they represent the United Nations corporations not you so urban governance oh the United Nations habitat for a better urban future declaration on the norms of good urban governance for adoption by the United Nations General Assembly governance is not government governance as a concept recognizes that power exists inside and outside the formal authority and institutions of government many definitions of governance include three principal groups of actors government the private sector civil society the urban governance is inextricably linked to the welfare of the citizenry good urban governance must enable women and men to access the benefits of urban citizenship good urban governance based on the principle of urban citizenship affirms that no man woman or child can be denied access to the necessities of urban life including adequate shelter security of tenure safe water sanitation a clean environment health education nutrition employment public safety mobility through good urban governance citizens are provided with the platform which will allow them to use their talents to the full to improve their social and economic conditions wow doesn't that sound great this is wealth redistribution you're all going to be brought down to a very low level where everybody is equal you all have the same shelter, same security, same safe water, sanitation. How are they going to create all of that when we don't have safe water now? Okay. The principles of good urban governance must be grounded in three potential sources of universal norms, international legal instruments. Your judge in Harris County wants to hand you over to the United Nations.
commitments made by governments at major United Nations conferences, operational experience in cities, international legal instruments, major international legal instruments relevant to a discussion on the norms of good urban governance include the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, Declaration on the Right to Development, Convention on the Rights of the Child. So, when these cities are going to be reshaping your government for urban governance, they will be adopting all of this. And by the way, the Declaration of Human Rights, 1948. I will link below to it. You can read it. I was going to read some of it, but you know what? It's You can read it yourself. Human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience, should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude, as we are all being moved into slavery or servitude. Um, in 1948, the signatories, signatories, all of these countries, including the United States of America. Why would the United States of America sign the Declaration of Human Rights when it undercuts the United States Constitution? Well, because we haven't had a Constitution for a long time and they have been in the works. This has been in the works for so long. The New World Order, the One World Government. Yes, you know, I was thinking, as I was doing the research for this, I was thinking, you know, Americans, they're just so wanting that quick fix. Okay, all right. Uh, we're going to uh, agree to a $2.5 billion flood infrastructure do it now, okay, because we don't want to have to suffer these floods anymore. No one will spend the time to actually look into weather modification, geoengineering, the deliberate use of weather as a weapon. No, they're not going to do that, especially in Texas. My God, you guys have so much weather modification going on. You've got a Texas Weather Modification Association, and they bring about rain a whole lot. I had posted in videos that guy from Texas talking about how they can make it rain in a larger area for longer periods of time and get a whole lot of rain. Success. Now think about it please. If they can do that, how the hell do you know? if these rains that are flooding you out are natural or intentional brought about to reshape your areas. How do you move people away from having this uh, faith in government? It's like a religion. I don't know. So um, when you hear urban governance, know that people are trying to reshape your government and hand it over to the United Nations. Enabling the participation of children in decision-making processes. That's uh, part of good urban governance. So we see all of these children being manipulated. Walk out of your, your classrooms and fight for gun control. Or kids. I was in a neighbor's apartment. She had the TV on. There was a commercial. It was H. It was the HPV vaccine. All of these kids guilting their parents for not ever telling them about the HPV vaccine, not getting them vaccinated. They're manipulating children. 
in a way to for these children to have control over their parents. It's 1984 on steroids, big time. So I will link below to these, uh, to everything. But it was the urban governance call from Ed Emmett near Judge in Harris County that really got me. It's going. Agendas are accelerating rapidly. You wait for Trump. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that, guys, because as you can see, everything is just going full speed of full speed of full speed ahead, sorry. And You know, w waiting for someone else to fix it. Well, we've had that idea for a very, very long time. Did anybody fix it? Nope. Did everything get worse? Yep. Keep waiting. Keep waiting and see what it brings you.